Hi everyone, it's Lisa with Ink and Inspirations and in this video I'm going to walk you through the steps that I did to create this ornament using the Santa's List stamp from the Holiday Catalog. So let's I get started. started with this Designer Rosette Bigs die from Stampin' Up! and I cut a piece of uh, designer paper 6 by 12 and I just cut this whole piece here and so what I did then is I cut my pieces to one and a half inch strips. I've used this side on this ornament and I'm going to use the pointed uh, side on the ornament that I'm showing you here. So um, if you don't have the die, you could always use your scoring tool and score every quarter inch all the way down and make your rosette. Okay, here's my rosette. And since the designer paper is lightweight, I just use snail to adhere the two ends together. Then I uh, heated up my glue gun. I punched a circle in cherry cobbler and I put a dollop of glue on that and then formed the rosette. And while I have this here, I'm going to go ahead and decide where my top is going to be and go ahead and punch my hole in it for the hanger for the linen thread. Okay, so now the next element was this uh, silver glimmer paper snowflake cut from the festive flurry framelits from the holiday catalog. And I wanted to add a little bit of the vintage feel to this sparkly, so I cut a doily in half and I'm going to just sponge it up a little bit with crumb cake ink. And then what I'm going to do is gather it up a bit and adhere it peeking out from the back of this snowflake. Okay? And you can trim this if it's too big for you, which I think this is. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. I'm going to cut off this excess here and just get a little piece that I can glue behind this snowflake, just like that, okay? So let me get some Tombow glue and go ahead and put some on the snowflake and then just attach like that. Turn it over and look at it and set that aside and let it dry for now. Okay, next I stamped uh, the Santa onto a piece of crumb cake cardstock, just a piece of scrap. And uh, the stamp is very detailed with all the brush stroke lines in it. So I took my stays on pad and I really inked it up well this way and then stamped it and made sure I had a good crisp image. So now we're going to color this and I'm going to use my uh, Stampin' Right markers and my blender pen to color. Um, you could color straight with a marker. It's a little more um, bold or bright. I like the more muted feel, so I'm using one of my clear blocks as a palette, and I'm going to color a bit like that, and take a blender pen, and I'm gonna scribble off to make sure the, the it's clear, and pick up some of that ink, and then I'm going to color Santa's coat. And I'm going to pause while I finish that. Okay, I colored most of his coat. And then when I needed more ink, I just would scribble a little more on the block, pick up a little bit with the blender pen, and here I'm going to finish his hat. And it makes just a muted color onto this crumb cake. Okay? So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to do his face in blush blossom. So I'm going to color over here on the block again, scribble off to make sure the tip is clear, pick it up and just go around for his face. It just kind of adds a little bit of color to that crumb cake. And then what I'll do for his nose and his cheeks, because I want a little bit of rosiness, is scribble on some pink pirouette and pick up some of that ink and kind of do his cheeks and nose a little rosy. Okay, I see that I need some more blush blossom around his eyes, so I'm going to scribble a little bit more, pick up, and just come on through, just like that. 
And then I want his eyes blue, so I'm going to scribble some Marina Mist. Pick that up. Oops, I don't think that was totally clear. And just give a little bit of blue to his eyes. Okay, the next I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Stampin' Chalk marker and I'm going to do just wispy strokes on his beard, mustache, um, and eyebrows. So I'm just coming through like this. I love this marker. It's great for the chalkboard look, but I've also found I've liked it for uh, Christmas projects. Oh, and I forgot I need to do his lips too. Okay, and then get a little bit of the eyebrows. Just like that. And get my blender pen again. And this time I'm going to pick up some more of this cherry cobbler for his little mouth here. Okay. And I'm using this um, smoky slate for his gloves. Uh, just to give it a little bit more color. Scribble there. And... Be sure your blender pan is clear. Pick up and color. Okay, I'm going to finish the gloves and then I'm going to come back and show you okay, what I did for I the Okay, before I do fur. the fur, I'm going to show you the next part in succession, what is the easiest to do, and that's to either punch or cut him out. On this one, I used this circle framelit here, and it was this one right here, so it's one, two, three, four, the fifth one in from the center. And um, you could use the two and a half inch circle punch. That's a little bigger, and the the barely the tips would barely show. Let me show you. Here's the two and a half inch circle punch, and you see you would get a little bit of the tip showing. So if you have a smaller punch or framelit that would work, uh, that would be good. And I'm going to, going to go ahead and cut this, and then come back okay, and show next you the. Okay, I'm going to take some of my Tombow uh, adhesive. You could also use a two-way glue pen and I'm just going to scribble in some glue on the fur parts of his suit and I did go back and color in some more of the cherry cobbler on his jacket and hat I wanted it a little bit darker so I added a little bit more and touched up his beard a little bit too okay so let me get all the fur. And on the list, I used some of that smoky slate to kind of add some shadows. Okay, here's the dazzling diamonds. And we're just going to sprinkle that. And so he's going to have like um, snow glistening fur. And it looks kind of rough when you first get it on. And you see, I stamped it once on the back. I didn't like it, so I used the other side. Um... But once it dries, it's just really pretty and sparkly. So I'm going to set that aside. Another thing I'm going to do as it dries a bit is I'm going to sponge around the edges in crumb cake so that we can put the rest okay, of it together. Okay, I have sponged around the edges. And then I still had my hot glue gun um, plugged in. So I went ahead and used hot glue to glue this embellishment that we did at first just behind the upper left a quarter of this Santa circle and then glued hot glued the whole thing onto our back our little rosette and I was sure to find the hole that I had pierced so that the Santa would be at the top Santa's head would be at the top and then on this one you see I used the date so I wanted to do another one just like it and I used the um, photopolymer uh, clear set typeset stamp uh, with stamps with the little uh, numbers there and I did have to stamp each one individually so that I could get them spaced like uh, close together and but you could use a sentiment here if you wanted to uh, that's totally up to you so I'm just going to think I'm going to use a mini glue dot and attach that here uh, in the same way I did on my sample and then to make that stand out a little bit, I am going to use a rhinestone and just put it right there. Okay, and then you need about 12 inches of linen thread. Double it and then just thread it through that hole. 
Okay, I made the hole a little bit larger and that made it easier for me, but I do think that I would go ahead and put the linen thread in before you assemble it all. And I'm going to put the two ends through the loop. And then I will tie it up at the top with a knot so that it can hang from the tree. Okay, if you have any questions, you can email me at lisa at inkandinspirations.com. Sorry this ran so long. It just took a little while to get it together, but I hope you'd enjoy it, and you will come back and see me again soon. So take care. Bye-bye.